Hey guys, hey Bulldog time. This one I wanted to start off talking about the uh, guitar part in the intro. It's something I didn't notice was that it starts off with a hammer on and then followed up by the hammer on being the second note rather than the first note. So like that versus like that. And it it's kind of hard to hear. It happens pretty quickly. So from the intro. Right there. That's the way I hear it. I hear the little grom uh, sound coming up in there. I think that, that adds a lot to it. And then after that, George kind of cuts out for the verse. John's playing piano. You know, it would be a B to the F sharp minor. But he's not doing anything. Until here, George does bam, bam. And then he doesn't do it the first time, but the next time it does that little ba dum ba dum bum. So that's like um, right here. Or is it two A's? Open A's. Like that. And back to those hits. Also, the chorus, I used to just play the piano riff because I, I didn't really notice there being a guitar riff, so I, I figured that he's just doubling the piano with the. Uh, I'll show you that too. So it's like. Uh, just walking up chromatically. And then. Be the next part if you were to play that on the guitar which you shouldn't if you're doing a recreation or a george tribute band kind of thing uh, george is actually doing so the chorus is going and then you can and i didn't notice that until watching the promotional video you can see george doing this with his fingers and I was like what is he doing there and I listened to it and then there it was there's a part in there that's doing exactly that so I thought that was really cool the next thing is the guitar solo everyone seems to think a different Beatle is playing it except for Ringo but I've seen people think it's Paul it sounds like Paul's playing I've seen people say it's George and John and you see John holding the SG in the video and you also see George holding the SG and John holding his casino I mean it, it was a 10 hour session so they were trying out a lot of different things I think what happened probably is they did the basic track and then they uh, were trying to come up with a, a suitable guitar solo. You know, like someone said, it's only 18 seconds and it's genius. Well, they probably didn't come up with that on the spot. It was something that maybe George and John were sitting together. Looks like John's having a cigarette. You know, they're goofing off, coming up with guitar riffs probably. And then George later went and recorded the guitar part. What I think they came up with is with this open note and the seventh fret on the E string. That. And then immediately go into this B chord, just with your one finger though, and sliding it down, and then walking it up that B um, arpeggio. And then this this is actually where I hear two guitars. Well, three guitars, counting the backing track that was originally laid down, which includes the and the verse. But so there's that guitar going on, and then I hear double tracked guitar solo, especially in this spot. Let me play it again through there. Ba -da -ba. In the background, you hear ba -da -ba with like a more fuzzy guitar. So the main one is the louder one, and then behind that, there's another double tracked guitar that's a little bit quieter. And that's why I threw that in there with the John guitar. I thought that'd be a little cool. Yeah, I tracked it on the casino just in case it didn't. We ended up thinking it was the casino, but it's obviously the the SG. This is where it changes from major to minor, I guess, kind of. He's walking down to the A chord using this note, that, that D instead of the, the B major note. Then to the E7. That, and then it, he does it again. To a B. That's just walking up two different inversions of the B. And that's 
pretty much it. Then the song fades out and he does the riff. pretty much it for this one. Let me know if you think of anything else that's interesting for it. Thanks for watching, and now over to Neil. Hey guys, Neil here. Well, this is it. It's the video you've all been waiting for, video you've all been asking for. Hey, Bulldog is here, and I'm here to talk about the bass. Everyone loves this song. Everyone loves this bass line. People have been asking for it since the beginning, but why? Why do, why do everyone like it so much? Do you know why? Well, it's just it's just super cool to start with that. But I think it's Paul's feel on the song that sets this bass line apart from anything else. It's not like there's a lot of catchy hooks in it. You know, there's the riff, but everyone's playing the riff. The piano and guitar and bass are playing the riff, and even the drums to some extent. It's just Paul has this feel on the song that is unparalleled to kind of any bass line he's done before or after. It's amazing. It's just this silky, smooth feel, and it completely completes the song. Because it's already a groovy song, but this makes the groove happen, I think, in this song. Because everyone else is kind of ba 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 da 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 ba da da do 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 You know, he's filling up all the syncopation. He is grabbing all of it, and it's great. It's great stuff. So. I'd love to talk about uh, the, 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 this bass and all that. Because, by the way, I don't know if you know, Hey Bulldog is one of the only filmed Beatles sessions. They were shooting the Lady Madonna promo video, and then they realized it was Hey Bulldog. So you see them recording a lot of it. You see John and George playing the SG. You see Paul playing tambourine with Ringo. And you see him overdubbing the bass part with, with, with the Rick, you know. Let's talk about this, because this is a, an amazing bass on the song. Now, I think... I could be wrong. I think he uh, he's using the mutes on this one. So I'm using my mutes on this one right now. And now, before you, 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 you think, what the hell? Let me tell you this. It's different. This is a 1982 or 83 4003S, this bass. The mutes they used to make for Rick basses were amazing. They're great. They make them so bad now. They're these thick rubber pads that have the wrong radius. So when you lift them up, it only touches the middle two strings, and then to touch the rest of them, it's so pressed into the string, it literally, it like, it like literally sounds like that. It's, you, it's unplayable. But, I don't know if you can see on this, I'm going to try to show you here. It's a much thinner mute, and it's original. It's more like the, uh, the Fender jazz bass mutes, or the, the Fender bass mutes. So actually, that's what I tell everyone to do. When you get your rig bass, take the bridge apart, unscrew the whole thing, take that mute out of there, buy a Fender bass mute and replace it. There's, it's a little bit of work, but you can do it, you know. That's what you need to do if you want that kind of gung -gung sound, especially for Hey Bulldog. Now, with that mute on, uh, and this is part of the reason why I think Paul is doing it, is because you, you kind of have to feather the bass. You can't pluck too hard. But, and you can hear that when he's, he's playing the isolated track and... in there and whatnot but I'm using those it's really a secret weapon when you get when you get good mutes in a rig it really sounds great because as much as I love these basses they're not practical you can't really palm mute especially with this thing on so the old mutes on the vintage basses or you get the uh, the fender bass mutes and put them in there and that'll do you good too so that's what I'm using on this that's what I think Paul used it sounds like that it definitely has a
God, I love this bass line. This is one of the first I attempted to learn as a kid. I was way in over my head. And uh, so I'm proud to share it with you now. There's a couple little musical things I guess I'll go over. There's so much going on with this, I don't, I don't know where to start. Really, you just gotta kind of learn it. There's a couple little notes I never noticed before. It's mainly in the first few verses. Uh, so it goes... After that riff, when it goes to the A chord. And the... It does that. It does that a couple times. It goes... It goes to that C sharp, and I never noticed that before. And one of the times it goes to a D too. It goes... Let's see, what does it do that? It does it in verse one and three, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool, it's a cool little thing. There's a couple little notes like that I never caught before. You know. Yeah. I don't know, man. Leave a comment, ask me questions, tell me what you love about this bass line. All this stuff, it's just so great. I love the Beatles so much, I hope you love the Beatles too. This is so much fun to talk about this shit and to, to dissect it and all that. Thank you so much uh, for watching, guys. I really appreciate it, and I uh, hope you enjoy. Hey, Bulldog. Here's a supplemental video for Atley House's Hey, Bulldog drums. Had a lot of fun recording this one. This drumming showcases Ringo's left-handed fiddles that he is so known for. I'll show you the sticking pattern, and otherwise, think of this as a left-handed variation of the Bo Diddley beat.